Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. The Kingdom of Bahrain joins the world in celebrating the World Immunisation Week, which is observed in the last week of April every year. This year's theme, The Big Catch-Up, aims to boost awareness of the importance of vaccines and their role in preventing many diseases and protecting the community. The Kingdom of Bahrain has brought about many accomplishments in this respect, thanks to the support and directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Highly secure and effective vaccines are provided to protect the health and safety of all. The extended immunisation programme in the Kingdom of Bahrain is considered as a main pillar of public health and primary health care. Recommended vaccines are administered from birth through routine childhood vaccination and extend to include different age categories like school pupils, women of childbearing age, the elderly, highly vulnerable groups to diseases, health workers and travellers to various travel destinations. The Kingdom of Bahrain is proud of its achievements in combating communicable diseases and controlling pandemics through vaccination, which has become apparent mainly in fighting COVID-19, thus setting a model to emulate that won the praise of the World Health Organization, the WHO. The Seaport's Customs Department at the Customs Affairs thwarted a smuggling of narcotic substances which were stuffed inside a shipment of potatoes contained a container from an Asian country. The Drug Control Directorate of the General Directorate of Crime Detection and Forensic Evidence formed a security team which moved to the site and initiated the necessary security and legal measures where physical evidence proved the presence of more than 33 kilograms of narcotic hashish and shabu, with an estimated market value of about 700,000 dinars inside the potato shipment. The search and investigation work that was carried out to reveal the circumstances of the case resulted in identifying the owner of the importing company for the shipment, who is an Asian outside Bahrain, as well as a number of intermediaries involved in the smuggling process, clearing the procedures and transferring the shipment to the store. Six suspects involved in the case were arrested, most of them hold the nationality of the country from which the shipment came, including the brother of the owner of the importing company. A search and investigation work continues to arrest two others outside the country. The General Directorate of Crime Detection and Forensic Evidence has taken the prescribed legal measures and referred the case to the public prosecution. The Information and E-Government Authority has revealed in its 10-year statistics in education in Bahrain the number of Bahrainis enrolled in education according to educational stage, age and gender. Statistics show that the number of students enrolled in education in 2020 reached 237,444 male and female students. The statistics show that the number of males enrolled in education is more than females from pre-primary to preparatory stage. Thus, the number of females enrolled in education is more than males from the secondary level to postgraduate studies, indicating that the males enrolled in postgraduate studies amounted to 974, compared to 1,126 females enrolled in postgraduate studies. The statistics show that the largest number of those enrolled in education, according to age, are from 6 to 11 years, as their numbers reached 88,137 of both sexes. The statistics also showed that those aged 30 years and over are the lowest by 3,228 of both sexes. The Kingdom of Bahrain continues to invest in the human element in all fields, especially in the tourism infrastructure represented in the Vatel College of Hospitality, due to its specialised national cadres that have contributed to supporting various tourism projects and supporting the Kingdom's vision of 2030. In line with the goals of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King, Bahrain has become a model in the field of hospitality and tourism that achieves tourism goals in line with the plans of the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to support the national economy and highlight its position as a global tourism centre. The Vatel Bahrain International Hospitality School has become one of the distinguished projects that enrich the national economy and highlight the Kingdom's position as a global tourism centre. The Vatel Bahrain International Hospitality School is one of the distinguished projects that through its vital role has made the Kingdom a global roadmap in the field of tourism and hotels due to the fertile ground it contains for training national cadres in the field of hospitality and tourism until they have become today with the international competencies. The Vatel Bahrain International Hospitality School, through the realisation of the Bahrain Tourism Strategy 2022-2026, to 2026, 
constitutes a fundamental pillar for the development of the tourism and hotel sector and achieving the desired goals in diversifying sources of income. Prestigious and meets the requirements of hospitality and tourism and continues to advance the national economy. UAE Foreign and International Cooperation Minister Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nayan telephoned his Saudi counterpart at Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud, praising the successful evacuations by Saudi ships of UAE citizens and other citizens from sisterly and friendly countries from Sudan to Saudi Arabia. Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nayan lauded the leading role of Saudi Arabia in the evacuation process in cooperation with other countries. Saudi Arabia extended a helping hand to evacuate its citizens and nationals of other countries from Sudan in implementation of the directives of the custodian of the two holy mosques and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The step comes as the crisis in Sudan continues to escalate between the army and the rapid support forces as it enters its 10th day. The Foreign Ministry said that the Royal Saudi Naval Forces carried out the operation that evacuated citizens, other nationals, diplomats and international officials from Sudan with the support of various branches of the armed forces. The Ministry said 66 persons from Kuwait, Qatar, UAE, Egypt, Tunisia, Pakistan, India, Bulgaria, Philippines, Canada and Burkina Faso were among the evacuated. The number of evacuated Saudi citizens were 91 persons. All the Saudi citizens and nationals of other countries have arrived safely in Jeddah. The United States sent three helicopters to evacuate at least 100 US Embassy staff from Khartoum. This comes in light of the acceleration of many countries to save their nationals from the battles taking place in Sudan between the army and the rapid support forces. France evacuated about 100 people from Sudan to be followed by another 100. Meanwhile, a British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, announced that the British Army had evacuated British Embassy staff and their families from Sudan. Ankara also began its operations as it transported about 600 of its nationals by land from two neighbourhoods of Khartoum and the southern city of Wad Madani. And with the cautious calm that prevailed today in the Sudanese capital, Khartoum, Many evacuation buses for a number of foreigners and Arabs began to arrive at the Egyptian border. The Egyptian authorities announced their intention to establish a relief centre at the Akin border crossing in Sudan to receive displaced Sudanese and foreigners. The European Union again urged a ceasefire in Sudan. The European Union's foreign policy chief, Josep Borrell, from Luxembourg said prior to an EU foreign minister's meeting, that the international community cannot allow Sudan to explode because that would affect the entire region. <music> Dubai Metro has ferried over 2 billion residents and tourists since it first rolled out in September 2009. This was revealed by Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. In a tweet, he recalled how Dubai went ahead with the bold decision of launching the metro and delivered what we promised. In a tweet back in September 2019, Sheikh Mohammed had highlighted how the Dubai metro was once a dream after visiting London in 1959 with his father, who insisted to see a train's cockpit. Fifty years later, Dubai Metro came true in 2009. He said that nothing is impossible if you can dream it.